Another beautiful morning in Colombia. Today I woke up in the hotel boutique Casa Rosalia. They invited us for a night and it's a beautiful boutique hotel run by a beautiful woman. And it's a good example that not only in the main tourist destinations like Medellin, Cartagena, Bogota, you find people with vision, sense for style, no, also here in regions, in the department of Cesar, I'm sure. Nobody of you or 99.9% .9 of you viewers never heard about the department of Cesar. So that's where we are today. And I would like to tell you a bit more about the hotel. It's really one of those fine boutique hotels where details are just great. It's an oasis in the middle of the city. You have a nice pool. You have the hammocks because it gets really hot. Plants and trees and you have birds flying around. And I think during this journey, it was the most comfortable bed I slept in so far. And it's just the kind of experience you want when you go to a boutique hotel. Mi nombre es Josefina Castro Daza, yo he habitado esta casa desde el año que nací, en 1955 y esta casa fue un regalo de bodas de mi abuelo materno en el año 1950. Aquí vivimos como familia 54 años, pero eh, se transformó en un hotel boutique en el año 2007 cuando vi la necesidad de que en Valledupar pues no había un hotel pequeñito, agradable, que expresara la cultura vallenata, porque todos eran unos hoteles más comerciales, y decidí hacer la Casa Rosalía para darle un, un alojamiento especial a las personas que visitan Valledupar. Nos dedicamos a consentir a los huéspedes de que llegan hasta que se van. Los desayunos son preparados desde la molida del maíz en la mañana para hacer las arepas. Es una casa vallenata. Aquí hablamos de lo que somos los habitantes de esta región. O sea, que aquí estamos para recibirlos y hacer de su viaje y su visita a Valledupar algo especial. We are making ourselves ready to head out, discover the places close to the capital, Valledupar and we'll find what the department actually has to offer. We are visiting the important sites. ¿Quién eres tú? ¿Cómo te llamas? <laughs> Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Adela Becerra. Soy eh, vallenata y quiero que todos conozcan la cultura vallenata. Y aquí Fran les va a ir mostrando poco a poco de todo este folclore que no solo es de Colombia, de Valledupar, sino que muchas personas quieren conocer de lo que es el vallenato y nuestra esencia eh, cultural aquí en Valledupar. Vallenato is the cultural heritage, it's the music. And this place is actually the birthplace of the vallenato. ¿Quién son esos chicos? <laughs> Estos son los exponentes más grandes del vallenato. Aquí está Jorge Oñate, Diomedes Díaz y Poncho Zuleta. And as you can see here, he was really avant-garde. He's also having a diamond on his tooth. Now we'll go to Michael Jackson. Exacto. Diomede Díaz es el Michael Jackson Vallenato. Exactamente. Michael Así Jackson es. of Vallenato. <laughs> so right now I'm sitting with the Michael Jackson of Vallenato. He's called Diomedes. And he's so famous. On the other side, when I said the Michael Jackson of Vallenato, some people standing around, locals, they were cheering and like, yay! <laughs> you see? So he's really the Michael Jackson, the local Michael Jackson, Diomedes. Very important person. If you ever come to Valle du Pas or Cesar or Colombia and you shout out his name, everybody will know who that is. And something mandatory you need to do, you have to come to this place and take a picture with him. Whenever you come to Valle du Pas, this is something you have to do. So come here and take your picture with this guy. 
Thank you, Michael Jackson. In Copenhagen, Denmark, you have in the port the Little Mermaid. Here we have the Big Mermaid. The difference is the Little Mermaid in Copenhagen is a saltwater mermaid. This mermaid, which is like 10 meters big, is a freshwater mermaid. So I'm not sure if they're related or not. So this is what locals do. They come here, they have mango with uh, salt, sal -y, and lemon. You can eat it like this. You can buy it from guys like him. This is the Guataburi River. So locals come here, take a refreshing bath. The river, it's, it's, the water is clear, totally clear. It's beautiful. And because it gets up to 35 degrees uh, during the day, it's really refreshing because the Rio, uh, the river, actually comes down from the Sierra Nevada to Santa Marta. So it's clear, fresh water. Temperature is really comfortable. And right now there are not so many people, but it will for sure fill up much more during the day. So if you come here, bring your shorts to have a cool bath in the local river. And there's a reason why the river is so clean, because unfortunately in Colombia they do not maintain the nature as it should be, but here the local indigenous, uh, what, what's their name, Sarah? Arawaco. 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 Arawacos. They're in charge of taking care of the river and all the way up where you have the spring of the river, they're taking care of making sure there is no contamination, there is no pollution. So this is why the water arrives here totally clear and oh, it looks just amazing. And I hope my mom won't see that because she's always scared I'm doing stupid stuff and I will look for myself. Hi mom! Hi! <laughs> Hi. Driving here in Cesar reminds me much of my road trip in Canada. When I was driving towards the Rocky Mountains, the picture was quite similar. Here you have the mountain chain of the Sierra Nevada we see one peak covered with snow, which is white, of course. And it looks just astonishing, beautiful. Everybody who knows the Rocky Mountains and has been to the Alps in Europe will remind himself that this place looks very similar. Here you have the, the plain land and when you drive towards those mountains, it's just so impressive. The picture, the view you have, we're now on a bridge and what I saw here really impressed me. It was like, I felt like home in Switzerland because for those who know the canton of Ticino in the south of Switzerland, you know there are some valleys with exactly the, a very similar landscape. You have rivers and stones and people go there. It's really attractive. It's a tourist site and it's so beautiful. So. It looks so similar, it's unbelievable. And for the Ichinus, it's a holy place because on the upper side from a bridge, the river is a bit wild and it comes down all, all, it forms a road between the rocks and it's a bit wild. And then underneath the bridge, it comes out and it really calms down, it's really slow and then in front of us you see two stones and this is the place where the indigenous donate to the river. It's for them a really special place because as I explained the wild and the soft spots of the river and it's, oh, it's just unbelievable and you know what there's nobody 
nobody's here. It's unbelievable. It's untouched. And we're really close to the Sierra Nevada, so it's indigenous land. And I'm so happy I can see all this. <laughs> We are now with the Guanguamo indigenous and the women are teaching us how to weave. So this is how the indigenous uh, produce their their bags it's uh, called mochila and it's all handmade and it's not that easy you need patience you need precision and uh, they need about one week to produce one of those and I think I would need about a year to produce one because it really needs some good handcraft talent which I obviously don't have you can see here what has been done before I took over and now you see how it looks like when I took over so it looks like a huge mess and uh, she said yeah you can do to practice it but uh, when I have it back I, w I have to correct it all <laughs> Este es un árbol que se llama Morito y este es un árbol que se llama Brasil. Eh, con el Brasil sacamos varios colores. Con este sacamos el Brasil, primeramente nos da un rojo que viene siendo como este, como este rojo. Y el, el rojo. Y también lo sacamos así como este, color rojo. El colorcito que está aquí es de la enjilla de coco, cuando uno tela el coco. También, y también se saca de, este se saca de localito. I received a gift. Ah, oh, qué lindo. It's a kitchen. Okay. Received earrings made by hand by the, <laughs> la malle. She's Mira este, la mar, la mar. Mira, thank you. She's, she gave us these beautiful earrings to make promotions of their products. So we parked the car and they told me they will blindfold me and lead me somewhere. So this really freaks me out. I'm really scared now. Let's see what's going to happen. I, I just told them that my health insurance plan is with the company Sura in case uh, they drop me. Somewhere I hear water. Maybe will, they will throw me into the water from a cliff. I don't know. Um, we'll find out. Fran, llegaste a uno de los paraísos del mundo. Abre tus ojos. Ooh. I think I don't have to explain much more, we just will show you some, some pictures we make in the scenery. Just beautiful. I'm going to jump from the rock. It's at least 30 meters.
After swimming in the probably most beautiful river of Colombia, we are heading out to grab some dinner and check out a famous Vallenato nightclub. Tonight we are at the Hollywood Boulevard of Colombia. You see the stars? There are one, two, three, four, five stars on the floor. It's awesome and it's all about Vallenato. So the club is called La Placita in Valle du Parc, Colombia, Department of Cesar. Tonight we stay in a hotel where two women are hosts and they call themselves Piloneras. They explained me Piloneras is a very ancient name for the women. It was the, their grandmother's generation and older Piloneras. They were crushing the mice and working in the kitchen and financing their lives and just doing their work. Today it will be translated to be a self-made woman. And today Piloneras means also the dancers in their traditional suits. We will show you a picture of that too. So let's go and see if Karina, one of our hosts, is here. Follow me. Today is the 7th, uh, 8th December and in Colombia you enlighten the candles to say hello to Maria who is flying by. It's, it's like the kind of short story. Um, and with every candle you have a wish. So I enlightened one candle, two candles. So I had already two wishes. La idea no es prender. La idea es que cada una de las velas sea un deseo de tu corazón. No, yo tengo como mil deseos. Ay, tienes bueno. Pues no Digamos mil. que los diez primeros, pues. <laughs> 